Now that you're able to connect microphones and instruments to your Scarlett, we're going to show you how to record them using Cubase. In this tutorial, I'm joined by the fantastic Grace George, who's going to be performing a section of one of her tracks for us to record. We're going to record Grace's performance in one take, capturing vocals and electroacoustic guitar. We'll be using the Scarlett Studio CM25 microphone to capture the vocals, and we'll be plugging Grace's electroacoustic guitar directly into the Scarlett to capture that as well. In this tutorial, we're using the Scarlett 2i2, but these steps will work with whatever Scarlett you have because we're just using the first two inputs. And you don't have to use the exact combination of microphones and instruments that we're using in this tutorial. You can use the information in the previous video to connect the microphones or instruments that you want to record. Using an XLR cable, connect the microphone to input one of the Scarlett and then turn on phantom power to ensure that this condenser microphone gets the power required to work. Next, connect the electroacoustic guitar to input two of the Scarlett. Then set this input to instrument mode as we demonstrated in the previous video. For the Scarlett Solo and 2i2, this can be done by pressing the button on the front panel so the inst lights up. And for the 4i4, 8i6, 18i8 and 18i20, open Focusrite control, go to inputs and switch input two from line to inst mode. Now play through your performance and adjust the gain dials to set the recording levels. Ensure that the gain halos are lighting up green, not yellow or red, as we explained in the previous video. If you're using a Scarlett Solo or a 2i2, then ensure that direct monitoring is turned on by pressing the direct monitor button once. If you're using a 4i4, 8i6, 18i8 or 18i20, then this will already be set up by default. Turn up the volume for your headphones until you can hear the microphones and instruments that you have plugged in. If you have speakers connected to your Scarlett, please use the monitor dial to turn down your speakers while recording in order to avoid feedback. On the Scarlett Solo, the monitor dial controls the speakers and the headphones, and we still want to use the headphones, so you'll need to turn off your speakers to record. Earlier, we showed you how to set your Scarlett as the audio device in Cubase. This tells Cubase that we want to use the Scarlett as the device for audio input and audio output. To recap, if you need to be working at a specific sample rate, like 96K for example, then please open Focusrite Control, click on the Settings cog, and select your desired sample rate just here. You can then close Focusrite Control and open Cubase. You may see this dialog box when you open Cubase, which asks you to select the audio driver for your hardware. If so, then please select your Scarlett or Focusrite USB on a PC from this menu and select OK. Now you'll need to set up your session by either opening a blank project or a template. Your Scarlett is now set up as the playback device for Cubase. If you didn't see this dialog box when opening Cubase, then we'll need to go in and set the Scala as your audio device. Go to Studio, Studio Setup, VST Audio System, and select your Scala from this drop down menu. Then select Apply Changes. Now let's create two audio tracks to record onto one for vocals and one for guitar. Go to Project, Add Track, Audio. Ensure that the configuration is mono and set the count to two, then select add track. Please double click where you see audio one and rename this track to vocals. Then double click where you see audio two and rename this track to guitar. We now need to tell these audio tracks where they'll be receiving audio from. Click on the vocals track and come over to the inspector on the left of your Cubase screen. This is the input routing section, and we need to select which of the Scarlett's inputs will be coming into this track. You'll remember that we plugged the microphone into input one of the Scarlett, which is displayed as left stereo in. 
so ensure that that's selected. Next, click on the guitar track and select right stereo in, which is the second input of your Scala, which is where we plugged in the guitar. The final thing to do before we record is to record arm these tracks. Click on both of these record arm buttons until they're solid red like so. You're now ready to record. Press the record button to start recording. You can hit the space bar to stop recording once you've finished. Just look at what you could have had as I'm walking away. Here comes the realization that you, you made a mistake. And when you see me, if you don't know what to do, just remember, baby, I'm better than you. Once you've finished recording, press the spacebar to stop and press these record arm buttons again to turn them off. There we go, you can now record microphones and instruments into Cubase using your Scala. I'm now going to show you how to do a basic mix of your recording. Press on the comma on your keyboard to return to the start of the project and then spacebar will act as your play and stop control. If you don't see this mixing section at the bottom of your screen, then click on the Show Hide Lower Zone button up in the top right of your screen and then select Mix Console at the bottom of this lower zone. You can control the volume of each of these recordings by clicking and dragging this volume fader and to reset any of the controls to their default setting, hold down Command on a Mac or Control on a PC and then click on the control, like the volume, to reset it. You can also add effects to the recordings that you've just captured. I'm going to show you how to put some reverb on the vocals. Click on the vocal track, click Inserts, go to Reverb, Roomworks SE. You may see a different selection of plugins depending on the version of Cubase that you're using. You can now see the reverb plugin has been loaded onto this vocal track. Then the only control that you need to use is the mix. This allows you to control how much reverb is being applied to the vocals. 100 means that you're hearing a lot of reverb and zero means that you're hearing no reverb and you can adjust this to your liking. You can then close this reverb plugin by clicking on the cross in the corner. If you want to open the plugin again to make adjustments, then you can click on it just here. You can also experiment with adding more effects from these menus, like delay, EQ, and more. You can now progress on from this video, and we'd love to know whether you're up and running with your new Scala. If you are, that's great, but if you still require some assistance, then we can direct you towards our support team.